Okay, it's time for the demo. KG7OOW here with the Ham Radio Village. Let's get going on APRS and a quick walk around on usage of every aspect. So let's get going. So APRS, the Automatic Packet Reporting System, is based on the AX25 protocol from the 1980s. Pretty old. Uh, another slang term for this protocol you may have heard is packet. Uh, packet is basically another use of this. We're going to dive into more of the APRS route of this uh, and some of the basic usage. So we'll go from the APRS website, how to see APRS. You won't need a license to do this. We are going to go to the end user someone transmitting APRS uh, from a handheld mobile. And we'll also take a look at a DigiPeter, uh, vital parts of the APRS network that get your message to other DigiPeters or to an iGate out on the internet to be posted online. So let's first take a look at where I go. This is where you are going to see APRS traffic live for your area. There's two main websites. Let's dive into the first one. So this is APRS.fi. For those of you who haven't been here, uh, it's a great resource to see live APRS traffic. Uh, we'll zoom out here. Uh, let's go to the Las Vegas area, DEF CON Central here, and see what's going on. So when you come to the site, it'll first probably throw you in uh, somewhere in Finland. Uh, you'll have to navigate to where you want to go. Uh, the right hand side will let you select how much traffic you want to see. Do you want to see traffic for the last hour? Do you want to see the last traffic for the, la uh, traffic for the last day there? So plenty of information to see. Uh, we're mainly going to focus on the map here though. So here's the Vegas metro area. There's all these icons about. We got, looks like an RV icon down here in the middle. Driving around is RV, broadcasting APRS packets. We have weather stations. We have other objects on the map, such as D-Star repeaters and things like that, like N7ARR over here. Zoom is not working great on the video. We'll we'll get some more details later there. And then here we are outside of Vegas. Uh, my favorite mountain, Mount Potosi. This is home to the Vegas DigiPeter and iGate. So it's definitely really cool to see all this on a map. And again, you don't have to be licensed to, to view this map. It's definitely a great resource. So this is what I go to when I am looking for who's coming through my area, uh, what are they doing, uh, are they listening on a frequency that I might want to talk to them on, um, mainly for vehicles here. Uh, but if we pan out into the desert, a lot of the times you'll see planes, you'll also see weather balloons and other things like that going across the map so definitely keep an eye out for those uh, let's let's perchance see if there's any weather balloons or anything going across right now I do not see anything up they typically do launch every couple weekends though out here in the west desert so definitely something to keep an eye out on okay Let's look into detail on some traffic. What are these users, what are these objects sending to the APRS network? So here's a car out in the West Desert going just past, uh, let's see, just past the test site over there. We have K6 VFA and he is cruising along the highway. We can see the timestamp of the data. We can see his heading, his speed, his altitude, 
any any GPS metadata that that radio is capable of putting out. Uh, he has a little message, Mike E and route, and he is repeated by the Vegas Mount Potosi repeater. Uh, if we zoom out here, we'll know we can uh, we can kind of visualize how his packets are getting to the internet map here. Oh come on. There's not one any clear. So if you hover over an object, oh come on. It is not wanting to work for me here. There we go. Let's uh let's get out here. Okay. See, so I'm hovering over his icon there. You can see it's going through the Vegas Digipeter up on Mount Potosi, down in the bottom middle there. And looks like it's going to another eye gate. Maybe the eye gate there, Potosi's down. So these eye gates that it's going to transmit to can be hundreds of miles away. Looks like that's down in the San Bernardino Valley. So that's a pretty crazy run for some APRS traffic. Uh, when you get to things like weather balloons, you'll have uh, hundreds of stations picking those up directly, but the first station that picks it up is the one that gets to report it to the system. So another really cool map to hit up when you're looking for some APRS action uh, is APRS Direct. It's more of a high-end web 2.0 type interface. It's got live updates. The icons will update live. You'll be able to see pings on the map when things happen as they're happening. So sometimes it's a little easier to see things here. Uh, this is kind of a newcomer to uh, APRS maps, which is great. Here, let me throw a, let me throw a link there in chat for you guys what I'm going through. So this map, very similar to the last map, it's just a little more interactive. Uh, we got same amount of data. You can see hops that these packets are going through. You can click on an object. There's our same guy we're going to be picking on here, K6VFA. He is cruising along. There's his same path. He's being reported through Vegas and his timestamp, same information, bearing, heading, things like that. So this is just really cool, very awesome way to see what's going on with the APRS network. Now, how do you get traffic to the APS network? So this traffic, uh, including weather stations, uh, handheld radios, mobile radios that are APR capable or anything else you can think of. Uh, they all require a modem enabled device or just a fully integrated APRS device to get out there. One of the easiest ways to get into it is with a integrated radio. So let's look at my handy Kenwood THD72. It's a great, here we go. It's a great little radio, not really little. It's a little bulky. Needs to go on a little diet there, but it's an all-in-one solution to get your packets out to the APRS network. This particular handheld can be used with the built-in GPS with the antenna on the top there. It can also be connected with a cable to a weather station or other KISS enabled device. So it's very cool, very fun to hear APRS going on. So it looks like someone's keyed up on APRS, but uh, sounds like voice data. Someone's got a hot mic. So the APRS frequency you're gonna wanna dial to on your all-in-one inclusive device is 144390 in North America. Uh, 
I haven't gone through APRS on any other country, so I'm not 100% sure if they're throwing other frequencies around for other regions, but definitely 144.390 for North America. Now, tuning into this frequency, you're going to hear uh, the raw APRS packets. They are going to sound very much like an old classic modem. I don't know. It sounds like I'm getting some interference or someone's hot mic in 390 for me, so I'm not going to be able to decode anything. Yep, just static. So I'm thinking I got some interference. But with this handheld, I can beacon directly just by hitting beacon here and it will uh, manually beacon my location based on the GPS uh, to the APRS network. I'm inside so my GPS likely is not going to get my coordinates and without proper coordinates I don't think it will show up but just in case let's go Let's go look for KG7OOW. I am not showing up, so there's definitely some traffic around though. So with a handheld like this, we get to configure it. So out of the box, you need to configure your handheld with typically just your call sign. So I, ju I just go to the menu, hit up APRS, and it typically just needs your call sign. So you throw your call sign in there, Oh, there we go. You'll typically just throw your call sign in, maybe a SSID at the end. See that dash nine at the tail end there? You can do that if you have multiple radios or if you want to have a specific ID for that radio. And then you'll basically just need to tell it how to beacon. So on this handy canvas, we got here we go. Where is it going? You can set your position manually and you have beacon. So this is how it's going to beacon your information. Typically on a handheld like this, you can set it to beacon on an interval or you can have it beacon using uh, what's called smart beaconing and that will automatically beacon you based on your speed and your heading. So if you take a turn, you change speeds, it's going to broadcast your APRS data uh, accordingly. So it's really cool. These little handhelds are great, but definitely on the pricey end. So this Kenwood THD72, had to look that up there, is I think I got this around 500 bucks. So it's definitely pricey. It's definitely capable, but uh, there's other options out there. So let me slide this over and give kind of a cheaper option. So one other cool option is a standalone unit. I got this handy AVRT5 from Amazing AliExpress. Um, these little things, all inclusive. It's only one watt of power, but you'd be surprised how far you can get out with APRS on one watt of power. Um, this handheld, this Canwood, I've gone probably 150 miles uh, as pure line of sight. So this was definitely to a mountaintop Digipeter. I was out in the Nevada desert and was able to get to a Digipeter in central Utah. So that was really cool. But this little, this little one watt uh, Chinese, uh, kind of hard to configure radio is actually pretty handy. I got hams here that will either throw, just leave it alone, or throw a linear amp on it and get a little bit more distance out of it. But definitely something you can throw into your backpack, hiking, uh, on your bike, in your pocket. So it's very cool, very, very nice little slim device here. Another option when you're picking end user 
APRS equipment uh, is definitely an app called APRS Droid for Android. So APRS Droid, I haven't gotten to work on the latest version of Android, but uh, most ham software, you're going to expect that. Uh, you can get little, um, this is called a microlinked TNC. And it's just a little 3D printed case with basically a um, Arduino Nano inside. And it connects via little three and a half millimeter jack there uh, to an adapter cable to your radio of choice. So it can be paired with a Baofeng. It can be paired with another radio, anything you want. And it connects via Bluetooth to your phone. So your phone will be running the APRS Droid app and very much like the handheld Kenwood, you get to put in your call sign. You can put in icons that you want to put and any messages that uh, you want to put as your beacon. Um, another really cool feature about APRS is not just GPS location, but messaging. So on my little Kenwood handheld here, I can send messages by you know using the keypad. Pretty old school, kind of like how you used to have to text back in the day uh, with the touchpad there. But the advantage of this cool little micro-linked um, TNC with your APRS Droid-enabled phone you can just use your Android phone type the message and get it sent. So it's much easier to use this paired with a phone and a radio than to just use the radio if you're gonna go the messaging route. So definitely something really cool. There's just, I always look on AliExpress or Amazon for new APRS devices and there's just, Every once in a while, they'll come out with something really cool. So that gets us around the end user devices, handhelds, other dedicated units from China that may or may not have reporting capabilities for the government there to mobile link TNCs with your Android phone. But there's another piece to this puzzle and that's the stations that actually get that data, the packets that these devices put out to other digipeters and eventually to the internet. And that's where a digipeter comes in. So this is a basic digipeter setup. I got these all over the state here in Utah and we have Definitely increased the, here, let me, let me zoom out here. We'll see if we can, okay. We have definitely increased the APRS coverage in my region and hoping to expand into other parts of Utah. So this whole setup consists of a two meter radio. This particular radio is just one I got off a of surplus. It's an EF Johnson uh, RS5300 here. And all you need is a two meter radio that has uh, connections on it to for push to talk and for the audio mic and speaker. Most radios you see out there will have this either through the front port jack here or with a dongle or connection in the back. This one just happens to be done with a DB uh, what, 15 connector on the back, DB9. And this just plugs in and gives me the breakout for audio, push to talk, and uh, that's all we need on the radio side. So a two meter radio. It can also be a handheld. I've seen people use bow things for this. So definitely something that can be done a little cheaper. Uh, but this is nice surplus radio. I got it for about 35, 40 bucks, so not too bad, not too shabby. So this radio needs to hook up to a device that can decode these APRS packets.
to do this decode, we I interface my Raspberry Pi with a Easy Digi. These are available on eBay, and it comes in a little kit. You have to solder it together. Just a little more part of the adventure. All you really have to do is solder two leads for the audio and the connections to your radio for push to talk, things like that. So in this particular setup, I am using uh, the GPIO for push to talk. You can also just use Vox if you're using like a, a handheld radio or a Baofeng. This particular two meter mobile radio is not capable of Vox. So I definitely have to manually trigger push to talk and that's where GPIO on the Raspberry Pi comes in. So radio goes to your Easy Digi. The Easy Digi is basically just an isolation. You actually don't need the Easy Digi. You can wire things directly. It's just safer. You're not going to blow your, you're not going to ruin your Pi with its uh, low GPIO voltage and you're not going to screw up your radio and you'll also get cleaner audio. So definitely go with the Easy Digi. On uh, the Raspberry Pi, it's fitted, since, since it only has a speaker output, I wish they made this a four pole connector with a mic input, but hey, you can always go to another Pi variant like the Banana Cream Pi or something for that. I just fit my $35 Raspberry Pi with a four or five dollar USB audio card. So you can grab these on Amazon. I'll put a link in a little write-up uh, when we post this video. But you just take your microphone, plug it in, and your speaker for your radio. Plug it in there, get it in the Pi, and you're good to go on the hardware side, uh, I guess, other than the GPIO. So GPIO is another, another step in the setup. The GPIO portion, as well as the software portion, is covered in the documentation of the software I use, and we'll get into that right now. Let's go to the good old browser view here. So my choice of APRS software for my Raspberry Pi or any other system is called Direwolf. So we'll hit up Direwolf. I'm just gonna use Google here. They have a great set of documentation on GitHub. You can go through any doc on here but the main thing you need to do is go for the documentation on your system. So they have documentation for Linux, they have documentation for Windows, and they have specific documentation for the Raspberry Pi. So let me look here. So yeah, I'm just gonna scroll down here just to make sure I'm speaking the truth here. But there we go, Raspberry Pi for ham radio. So Direwolf is going to be built on top of your Raspberry Pi. So you need to install a distro. I just use Raspbian for my Raspberry Pi. Get that installed on your Raspberry Pi and then use the instructions from GitHub here, the documentation repo to build it for your system. Mostly it is literally just downloading the source and then compiling it. Um, once you've compiled it, you can start right out and get it running. So let's go to, let's go to console and see what Direwolf gives us on the Raspberry Pi, what kind of information, what, do, what does it look like when you're actually using Direwolf on a Raspberry Pi? I'll go and I'll probably post um, maybe some quick dirty instructions for actually building a Direwolf kit on the website hamvillage.org. 
But for now, let's go cut to the end results. I think I'm pretty low on time here. And we'll go to the console here. So this is what a typical PuTTY installation, well, not PuTTY. This is what a typical terminal of Dire Wolf will read out once you're up and running. You will see traffic coming across from mobiles, handheld units, and in my area, definitely a lot of weather stations. Um, so there's a plethora of information here. And we can pick, let's see, let's pick this latest one that came in. So this was an eye gate. Transmit looks like uh, Okay, that was just for that node. So let's go to this one, AJ6KW. So AJ6KW with a destination of APTT4 came in with this path and looks like some GPS coordinates. So he came in with some GPS coordinates, position with time. He is using a tiny track. So that's one of those cool little all-in-one devices and it's spitting out his coordinates, course, and any other information. It's really cool just to see how much traffic you're going to get on these systems and the console. Um, see here's another one coming in. Looks like a Jeep on a mobile unit coming in here with some coordinates, course, altitude. And he's monitoring on 146520. So ooh, looks like Keith. And I can hit him up on that frequency, give him a chat, and it's just really cool. Uh, the terminal here isn't necessarily the place you're going to want to stock people on APRS. Definitely use the web interface to, to do your stocking, but it's just really cool to see what your radio is hearing directly. Because, again, um, the stuff posted on APRS.fi and uh, APRS Direct, uh, who, whatever station heard it first um, is the one that gets to post it there. So you may have heard it, but you may have not been the one that reported it to um, the servers there. So it's definitely something, definitely cool to see just the raw data. And see, here we go. Here's just an eye gate transmit from Frisco, Frisco Peak, just throwing a beacon out with its position and, and location and that. This is uh, AL7BX's AL rig, uh, a good friend of mine. He has uh, helped me a lot with this uh, APRS stuff. We we definitely are working together to, to build out more APRS rigs in our area. So I think we're pretty much up for time on the demo. Uh, the wonderful radiogram talk was amazing and pushed us over a tad, but no worries. Uh, let's go answer some questions in chat, if there are any. I know this was kind of a droned out presentation live demo, but uh, let's see if there's any questions uh, either in Discord or in Twitch here. Give it a quick glance and we'll get going here. Okay, well, definitely an earful. There's definitely more resources for APRS. If you want to get into APRS, you want to carry it along with you or you want to expand the APRS network yourself, go ahead and hit me up in the Ham Radio Village Discord on the DEF CON server or our own Ham Radio Village server. I'll throw links in chat. Um, just go ahead and I will even be able to help you remotely. I've helped people with remote desktop or remote, uh, yeah, remote desktop to help set up their rigs. So. Any help I can give, I'm just more than happy to expand and contribute to the APRS community. So 
thank you everybody and we'll see you back for closing comments here in just a little bit thank you